Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So we are in the most interesting time currently in crypto. For me, I'm very excited. A lot of people are getting quite deflated. They're getting a little bit upset with the market. But overall, I just keep this up on one of my screens on my setup. I keep remembering where we are. I keep remembering how much we have sacrificed to be here. And I keep thinking about how much I've fought, I've learned, and I've educated myself to be prepared for the halving event. So there is a lot of stuff going on with Luna Classic. Ultimately, there's an idea going around. This idea has been going around since the the very beginning of the inception of the blockchain. And, and honestly, there's pros and there's cons to this. But depending on what perspective you look at the reverse split, depending on what point of view you look at this from, depending on where you get the information from, you could be reading information which is totally irrelevant to the crypto sector because a lot of these technical terms, a lot of these ideas, they come from the stock market. They're not new. Uh, people have just copied what the stock systems do. Now, when it comes down to stocks and shares, you've got a lot of responsibility as a stock owner, someone who created that stock that people are hoping to trade on. There's a lot of legal ties. You've got a lot of investors. You've got private investors. You've probably got a board. You've probably got all sorts of different stuff you've got to go through. And in fact, hoops, right, that you're inherently going to have to jump through over time for these people. We're not really bound to that in crypto. Now, what I want to do is, is discuss why this is always seen as a negative thing. CZ himself said when a reverse split was suggested at the very beginning of this crash, that it was a bad idea. They shouldn't do it. They should burn through the supply because at that point, the supply was being minted through the market module and it was being put into the ecosystem by the creators and it could have been stopped. They could have sidetracked those coins. They could have been torched at that time. We're past all of that now. That's absolutely impossible to do. And anybody who thinks that you can just whip up 100 billion LUNC to be burned, you're kidding yourself. The people who want to burn the Oracle Rewards Pool don't understand how the system actually works. And they don't understand that if you were to burn the Oracle Rewards Pool, we would have no rewards left for the validators, for delegates, thus leading to a situation where delegates don't delegate and validators simply won't validate, meaning the chain would inevitably die. So we can rule that out for all intent and purposes that you're just not going to be burning through 100 billion LUNC any time soon unless anybody here has got enough money to buy 100 billion LUNC for us all to burn for fun, right? Anybody got that money? No, didn't think so. So let's keep moving. So with all of this being said, right, is reverse split a bad idea? Well, no, honestly, it's not because inherently we are dealing with somebody else's problems. We're dealing with somebody else's debt. We've inherited a chain with a lot of problems. We didn't design it. We didn't create it and we didn't cause the crash. But we as a blockchain are responsible for getting that supply down. And I would say to the community at this time, right, we're reaching a point where <clears throat> do you want to be burning for the next 100, 150 years, 200 years? But I don't. I don't want to be like shit. Now, a reverse split is not the worst idea in the world. If it's done correctly, if it's coordinated correctly, and it's all done in a manner which is slow, steady, and it gets every exchange on board, because for all intent and purposes, right, what you're doing with a reverse split is taking everybody's coins and saying, right, for every coin, sorry, for every 10 coins you had, you're now going to have five coins instead. So everybody's taking a loss on this. And there's no guarantee that the price if it did crash down, that it would ever come back up again. And these are all the risks that come with doing a reverse split. Now, there are companies out there that have survived reverse splits. But once again, these are all stocks and shares companies. They're not crypto based communities. We don't know, right, how everything works here because people still think that burning huge amounts of coins do really good stuff to the chart. Well, in fact, we've seen the opposite of that in LUNC and USTC and in other coins now. I watch OPXH burn a lot of coins and the price just went down. And that kind of really signals to me, you should try to burn through transaction on the dot, on the bubble, not build it up, not provide by the rumor, sell. 
that's what we don't want. We don't, uh, this is why I don't like launch dates and stuff like that, because it does lead to those kind of buy the rumors, sell the news situations. But anyway, let me get back on track here about the reverse split, because there are a few different people and it's not just these proposals, uh, sorry, these commonwealths that have led to this video. I've been watching a lot of people talk about this over the past few weeks and Honestly, if you were to do, and this is not me saying that it's a good idea, we should do it. I'm supporting it. I'm just merely giving the facts on the situation that it could be a good thing or it could be a bad thing. But in the situation we're currently in with all of the negativity that we have going on with the community getting smaller, the valid database only being a hundred, right? The risks are delisting stuff like that, but inherently Binance is not going to delist us if we communicate with them. The biggest issue with that is nobody has a direct line of communication to Binance that's willing to share it, if that makes sense. When I got my direct line of communication to TFL and Chris Armani, I brought the L1 in. I brought everybody in and I brought everybody on board so that wasn't a privatized direct route of contact to those guys, but we don't see other people do that. So the Binance direct lines of communication have always been kept by people like Ed, people like Vegas, and they don't share them out. So it's really hard to know what's going on. Even once again, we could say with the USTC Repeg team, how they more or less told us the whole time they're speaking to these people, but we just don't know. We don't know. A USTC Repeg never happened. So it really brings all of that into question. So once again, going back to this idea of a re reverse split, do I support it? Absolutely not in its current state, no way, shape or form. But if someone who's worth their biscuits was to come forward and actually figure this thing out, start getting those direct lines of communication in and actually start speaking to all of the different exchanges and explaining our situation and explaining that Inherently, these are, this isn't our problem. We're just trying to fix the situation and make something of this blockchain. And it's not fair that we're constantly held down by this supply. And if everybody just remains to be greedy, right? If we all continue to walk down this route of validators, double noding, validators, network noding, and the supply not ever going down, not enough people contributing in, then really it leaves a reverse stock split as one of the options that we could take as a drastic measure to bring this blockchain back upwards. So some of the key takeaways with the reverse stock split, and like I said, this all comes from stocks. So it consolidates the number of ex existing shares of stocks held by shareholders in fewer shares. A reverse stock split does not directly impact a company's value, only its stock price. So once again, all of the information that you guys are gonna be able to find regarding a reverse split is always going to be based on stocks and shares. And it has been successful. There's certain companies that have done this successfully and there's certain companies that have done this and died. You know, there doesn't seem to be an in-between with this stuff. So when it comes down to people speaking about reverse splits, people wanting to burn through drastic amounts of coins and coming up with all sorts of different stuff, I think people should take more thought. You know, if you need to go speak to ChatGPT, um, use your bots, do all of those things and come back with a better idea because what we're seeing at the moment, and this was actually a really good point that's been raised recently, is the current proposal up for vote. So if we get wallet.lunkdash up, this established a Terra Classic team. Great proposal, totally support it, totally up for it, but it's gonna cause more confusion. We already have an issue with people still thinking that the dynamic committee, sorry, the paper job is a module, it's a system, it's developed, it works, it's there, it's in place, and it's not, it's theoretical, and a lot of people are just abiding by a theoretical system. So when it comes down to all of these sort of things, this is just going to cause a lot more confusion. A lot more confusion. It's going to lead the community to expect that there's some sort of team being prepped. And if you go and you look at the Commonwealth for this, they're saying they want Moon Rabbit. They want Six Samurai. Right? They want those group of people established as a Terra Classic team. So I think everybody should be very careful as to what they vote for on this. I'm not going to be voting on it. There's not enough information there. There's not enough effort been put in. They've not taken the time to do a Commonwealth. They've not gone around. They've not spoken to anybody. And ultimately, if they're not going to make the effort, why should we make the effort to do all of their work and all of those things when it just could be a Trojan horse? This could be where... Six Samurai then turn around and go, well, you just voted to establish us. And we'll go, no, and they'll go, we'll go look at the Commonwealth. Because that's what we were saying in there. And it's a really 
interesting situation when somebody posts a proposal, then someone from the narrative group posts the Commonwealth and it it all becomes very confusing. So once again, like all of these things that are going on, I think people need to take more time, more effort and more energy into researching these things because like I, like I was saying in this, the person's saying instead of a reverse split, we should 100 billion LUNC could be burned per month for 60 months. We're going to lead people into a state of thinking that we have 60 or 100 billion coins just to torch every month and we don't. As a blockchain, all we have is what's in the Oracle Rewards pool and what is in the community pool, which you can see on Link Dash. We've done a few updates, by the way, folks. We're working on something extra special, which is coming new to the blockchain, not a tool that you're going to need. But <clears throat> inherently, we just don't have the money to fund this. And then people are saying about doing the reverse split and, and doing it in a manner to repeg USTC. I think people who want to re repeg USTC need to go and look at what we mint cash are doing because they're burning all of the USTC. They're having the community burn their USTC and another provider is doing the same with LUNC. So you've got two of these siphon attacks where <clears throat> what you really want to see is it go both ways. So there's like an economic sort of exchange and alliance for all intent and purposes where the coins don't get burned, but instead, you know, you get some coins on that chain, they get some coins on this chain and both chains prosper, but it's not about that for these guys. It's just about siphoning off the users, get you to burn your OENC, get you to burn your USTC and they give you the new coin, thus attracting you as a new user, a new holder, and you're in a completely new project altogether. And before you know it, you're thinking to yourself, hang on a minute, how did I get here? How have I managed to sell all of my LUNC and end up with some random crap coin that some random person who's supposed to be in jail has created? So there's all these different things going on, right? And I thought, you know, there's just all of these things going on. It's it's not easy for me to do one video, so I thought I'd just chuck it down into this video. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you think about the reverse split idea. Let me know if you know where there's a load of coins hiding uh, that we can burn aside the $15 million that uh, TFL has in Terra Classic uh, assets. If anybody knows, or if anybody's got, right, the market cap, which is about a billion dollars. If you've got a billion dollars and you want to spend 50% of that to buy back the LUNC supply or USTC supply, go for it. I'll support you the whole way. I honestly will. But until that day, I think we're walking down a route where we need to start to think to ourselves, we as a community did not create those coins. We didn't create the problem. We did not create the cash. CZ's, CZ's advice was that DK TFL did not do a reverse split. Well, they didn't. They forked and made a new chain, which is what CZ advised against, right? So I think the time has come for us to discuss with Binance the root, the root of a possible reverse split. So many R's in that sentence. A possible reverse split moving forward. And as negative as it sounds, as much as a lot of you are going to freak out and be like, oh my God, HCC is talking about a reverse split, this, that, and the other. I don't support it. I wouldn't vote for one currently. And the current proposals that are, are terrible. And if they do lead to proposals, they'll just lead to more confusion. What I think is, a very strategic tactical route should be planned and it should be discussed for a long time on Commonwealth before it even gets to a proposal to save any confusion. And if people are to follow this reverse split route, if they are to do this, you need to go and speak to all of the CEXs because you run the risk of getting delisted. Okay. And that's one of the bigger risks that we do know could happen in crypto specifically but like i said other than that guys let me know what's going on in the comment section let me know what you did this weekend if you're new here drop a subscription drop a like drop a comment hit the notifications bell to stay informed and uh, other than that guys stay safe stay humble stay aware and as always i'll catch you in the next one